Hey, what's up, YouTube? Reef Spy here. Today, I was going to do another video focusing on another one of my favorite types of reef fish that I have up in my aquarium. Today, I'll be talking about dragonettes. Now, these are some of the most colorful and peaceful fish that you can possibly get for your tank. There are several different types of dragonettes we can get in the hobby. I have three inside of my 180 gallon tank. The first one I'm going to focus on is the Scooter Blenny. Now despite the name, this is not a Blenny at all, but rather it is a type of dragonette. I really like the dark brown, almost black type coloration with the white on this fish. It really does give it a nice contrast and it really is something to look at. I think this one is a female and the way you can generally tell is by the dorsal fin, uh, you know, the fin closer to its head. Uh, the smaller ones typically are female and the males typically have a much more elongated dorsal fin. My scooter Blenny spends the majority of his time picking through the sand bed and occasionally does go up onto the rocks always looking for little bits of food that it can eat. It really is an enjoyable fish to watch as it makes its way around the tank hopping from spot to spot. The next one I want to focus on is the Ruby Red Dragonette. And as you can guess, it gets its name from its nice bright ruby red color. I don't really think you can find many other fish with as striking of a red color as comes on these ones, especially when paired with the bright yellow fins. In contrast to the Scooter Blenny, which does spend a majority of its time picking through the sand bed, the Ruby Red seems to enjoy staying up in the rock work more than going down into the sand bed, although it will eventually go down there as well. This is one of those fish that everyone always points out when they see it in my tank. As you can see here, they do spend the entire day picking through the rock work, always looking for something to eat. Lastly, I have my blue mandarin fish, which is easily one of the most recognizable fish in the hobby. Just like the other two, this guy will spend his entire day picking through the rocks, always on the hunt for something to eat. I've had this guy for a while now, and he's easily one of the largest mandarin fish that I've seen. Usually when you see them in the store, they are quite small and a bit malnourished, although mine seems to be uh, feeding okay because he's probably one of the fattest ones that I've seen. This was probably the hardest of the three to film. For some reason, every time I brought out the camera, he wanted to retreat into the rock work and hide from me. A lot of times it's hard to get the true coloration on the camera, but the blue color with the green and copper colors on it is really quite striking when you see it in person. It almost has a metallic sheen to it. This is another one of those fish that everyone always has a million questions about when they see it for the first time. So it does make for quite the showpiece in your tank. These three fish that I have are quite peaceful and seem to go pretty much unnoticed to all the other fish in the aquarium. Before rushing out and adding one of these fish to your aquarium, it should be noted that they are generally regarded as expert level or difficult to care for fish. It really isn't anything with the fish itself that would designate it as difficult to care for. In my experience, they are quite hardy and rather self-sufficient. Where the concern comes in is mainly due to its feeding requirements. As you've seen in my video clips, the fish are constantly pecking and poking at the rocks looking for things to eat. What they're actually looking for are little small uh, microfauna or different types of um, small animals in your tank called copepods. There's also amphipods and anything you know, of that type of designation. 
These are little tiny crustaceans that live in the rock work and in between the corals and anywhere where they can squeeze. And that's what these fish mainly feed upon. The only way you could really guarantee to have enough supply of all of these types of pods in the aquarium is to do a little bit of planning ahead of time and to have a little bit of patience and wait for your tank to mature. With the proper environment and enough time, you can culture enough copepods in your aquarium or your refugium that these fish will depend upon and it'll be enough for them to survive with. Knowing that I wanted to keep these types of fish, I made it a point to install a refugium into my aquarium while I was setting it up. I loaded up my refugium with tons of macroalgae, which helps in the filtration of my system, but it also gives a nice safe place for all sorts of amphipods and copepods and all sorts of microfauna to live and breed in. And then these will eventually make it through the overflow back into the main system. You can see here a few of the different types of little critters that are living in this refugium. And these are the types of things that these dragonets really depend upon to survive. This is what they're really looking to eat. Another thing is you want to make sure you have plenty of live rock inside of your main display tank. Any of the little critters that make it up through the refugium, through the overflow, and up into the main display uh, do need somewhere to live when they get up here. Otherwise, all of the other fish in the tank are just going to eat them as soon as they get into there. So as they make their way into the rock work, and they do live up here as well, uh, the little mandarin fish and the ruby red dragonette and the scooter blenny, they're going to be cruising through this rock work all day long, just picking off little types of amphipods and copepods and things. And as long as you have sufficient rock work and a nice steady supply of copepods and amphipods making their way into the tank, you should have no problem keeping these types of fish. A lot of times you'll also hear people saying that they've gotten a mandarin fish or what are their scooter blennies or whatever eating frozen food. While it is true that they can go for that type of food, and I have seen mine go for it, my mandarin even does eat the occasional pellet. I really would not consider that as a viable option on keeping these fish alive long term. Uh, just based on their feeding habits and how meticulous they are when they feed and how slow that they feed, any times you're going to feed any sort of frozen food into the tank, pretty much all of the other fish are going to get at the food first and will leave very little behind for these guys. So you really want to make sure that they have a steady supply of the live food living in the rock work and in the refugium, and that's really what they're going to thrive upon. I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope that you found this informative or enjoyable. And if so, um, you know, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And I've got more videos planned and hope to talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.